What's up Rubits? Bo Heinemann back with another video. This time I'm looking at the Steel Bone H05 Heavy Fire Power Mecha Gray Type Joy Toy. This is Joy Toy. Um, Joy Toy is a Chinese company. You know, I'm going to take off this plastic wrap before I even begin because I don't want to shine and everything up. But it is a Chinese based uh, company that does incredible 125 and 118 scale Ah, come on, 18 scale um, mecha and figures. And if, you, if you're familiar with Acid Rain, similar kind of Acid Rain, very, very detailed, really cool. Um, I decided to go ahead and start collecting these. These are not cheap. This guy here, which is not that large, um, you know, as large as you would think, um, is probably 75 bucks, maybe 80 bucks. Um, and then you have uh, the 118 scale, which are the larger ones, quite a bit larger as you can imagine. And those are a bit more detailed. Oh, cool, I didn't know you could do this. Well, look at that. Oops, sorry, bumping the camera. Very, very cool. This one is, I just decided, you know what, I'm gonna start doing the 125th. I'm not gonna jump into 118. This is my second one. Um, I'll, uh, I'll have a, a playlist of all the joy toys. I'm starting to put on my uh, toy reviews in different playlists. So if you look on my, go to my page and go to my playlist and you'll see it in there. Um, I'll start putting it in. I don't want to rip this. I hate how they put these so tight that you're going to, uh, do you see what I mean? Like it's, you can't quite, and there we go. I had to get that open. I don't want to break it and make a bunch of noise. So you get a cool box. First thing I do with these boxes is I fold them up and I flatten them. I have a huge drawer in there underneath a bed that has all my, oh shoot, has all of my um, boxes that you can put, stuff like that. These things come with, a lot of times they come with a ton of um, parts and stuff and really what you're doing is you're just kind of, sorry about that, you're just kind of adding them to a frame. So what I show you is the bot, the mecha, and then you can take everything off of the mecha and bake, it basically has an inner frame. Um, see all those parts you get? Um, really, really well detailed, hand painted. Oh, look and see, they have English. I wish, I wish um, the Hexagear would do do something similar. So what I'm trying to, what I'm working on now is is getting a good checklist, making a good checklist of all of the Stillbone uh, bots so that I can check them off. This one also came with a figure, which I'll show you in a minute. I'm just going to toss that right here. Oh, sorry, Betty, my doggy's sleeping, and I woke her up. Let's push that to the side first pop out the big boy first here um they're just really well de they're just really nicely detailed they're a little bit of a luxury item i think being that they're you know so expensive um so if you're going to get into them just get one at a time or something don't don't break the bank and buy, buying the heck out of these things they're not selling out everywhere you can find them on amazon and everywhere but they're just fan they're just so i mean look at the details it's not it, they really what they what they do here and the reason it's a little more expensive is they spend a little bit of time just touching the little metal parts, putting a little bit of weathering, but it's it's actually, these are actually a great way, if you look at the details here, a great uh, example of what you can do with your own uh, model builds and stuff to make them look really cool without spending a ton of time. Now there's a lot of techniques here we won't go through of course, but still, um, you could, you can, a lot of people will take these and either paint them even more themselves or they'll um, kind of get inspiration from these. So one thing that I want to point out before I even start cracking this all apart, because when you get a new toy like this, it'll be kind of tight. You, your your, your uh, first feeling is to kind of just grab it and start going for it, but you have to be careful. What I want to point out is here on the arms, for example, this is the elbow joint here, it looks like. I want to hold it on both sides of the joint first. Oh, that's not bad at all. Okay, good. Whew. Sometimes they pop and just crack really hard. This is actually a little bit loose, which is surprising. Typically, they'll have some fingers in individually move, as you can see there. Really, really cool. I mean, just, you can make them flipping people off and do whatever. They just, they, they have all these details, and it's like having a model that you built yourself that is not, um, that has, was just done to a certain degree of, you know. So you want to straighten out the legs a little bit. Let's see if I can get them going here. I'm trying to look and see how this goes so I can kind of get them to stand up. So he kind of unfolds a little bit. This is pretty loose actually inside here too. I wonder if that, you can see the ball joint right there. I wonder if that is something we can tighten up. Maybe even just a little bit of, um, uh, uh, 
you know, rubber cement to kind of help it out. See how tight that, that arm joint is? I want to grab it kind of carefully. But they're really, really puzzle. They do a lot of really cool stuff. If you go over and you just Google Joy Toy uh, and put in maybe 125, something like that, um, it, or go to their Facebook page or their own, their, their store page or whatever, the Facebook tends to have some better photos. Um, they just make some unreal looking cool. The, the, the new Sniper ones, for example, look so cool uh, in the way that they just look really, really just, they almost look like a giant, you know, like an action figure more than kind of a mecha. So I'm not, a, I'm more of a fan of the ones that look more like Mecca than people, but still they're getting really, really, really cool looking. So I'm trying to get this kind of figured out how I want to pose it a bit. So you can actually, sometimes when I get them out, I just kind of set them on the ground like that and start messing with how that would look. Um, so we'll, we'll get him posed and stuff. I'll stop the, I'll stop the uh, film and get it in there. Let's look at some of the optional stuff you get. I mean, look at the gun. I'm not, as you all know, I'm not a gun guy. I don't care about giant weapons mecha stuff to me is the most interesting when it's kind of like uh, a farm equipment or something it's almost like a useful tool i mean i like the whole battle aspect i love all that stuff these are kind of identical guns it looks like but i just really like the idea of a lot of these things being used in practical ways so you're going to get some cool armor usually that'll pose and move the the plastic is nice and thick as you can see that it's a nice thick plastic don't let that fool you though. You could probably break some of these parts pretty easily. So I want to pull out the action figure next. This is again 125th scale, not 118th. 118 is going to be larger. But these are still, I actually kind of prefer this size. Now I haven't, I've, I've have other one, uh, uh, 118 scale stuff. And I do like the size, but it's just starting to get into sizes that are a little bit too big to start causing a headache on your shelf. Fantastic. Let me see if I can get some lamp in here for you. Uh, really poseable, really detailed. So a lot of people just enjoy buying the figures alone. The helmets are always a little bit bulky. It's not too bad though. It's not too bad. And what's cool about it is it, it kind of fits realistically. You know, it's, it's sized realistically. You can actually fit it on and off your head. And let's take a look at the little guns here, you know, typical guns. But you see, they even dry brush the guns. And that's where the pricing comes from really, is they're taking some time. That one did not get any dry brushing on it. That's fine. Um, you always have a medic pack for some reason, it seems like. And usually these will go back behind the seat. There will be, and on my last review, I made the mistake of not knowing where it went. It goes behind the seat here. Let's see if I can locate it. It usually goes right in here. Maybe not on this one. Let's open the hot, uh, cockpit and see. How do you open the cockpit? Uh, let's do, uh, I should just be watching the, reading the instructions. But So you fold that down. This comes out. There you go. So usually the medic pack, the med pack goes like behind there. And um, they have nice detailed interiors. I wish they had a bit more, maybe a sticker or painting on the screen there. Let's see how you're gonna open that. I don't want to get anything wrong, break anything. That would that would just suck. Uh, let's see. So here's your. Uh, oh, look at that. They're actually kind of assembling the whole thing together. It looks like. So it comes pre-assembled, but. I've seen that a lot. Uh, you see it a lot of Mega Constructs, Lego as well. They'll have their figures disassembled in the instruction manual, but they're never disassembled. So how does this go? Maybe it just sits like that. I don't know, but let's put the, put the dude in there. I've got another, a female pilot with my other one. So, and they do, cause they come with pilot stuff, which is really cool. Um, look at his face. He looks a little bit constipated, doesn't he? Just a bit constipated. Can't quite get that one all the way up. Let's take off this pack. Can you take it off? You cannot. Oh, oh, that just comes right off, so that's fine. So it should just slide right in there. Uh, slide right in there. There has got to be something to do here. Oh, okay, so it, it snaps on, it slides forward a little bit more. Can you push that forward? Yes, you can. So you get him in place, push his little arms in there. Let's see if I can, this is where I use these things a lot for. These are a little bit easier to help pose these guys. Get in there, buddy. Get your legs together. Okay, push that in. Close that, I guess. Is that right? That is not right. You know what I think it is? Is that, that, that backpack. See, that should go all the way down. But let's just, for now, let's put it like that. And that doesn't close all the way either. My goodness, I think it's that backpack. So let's pause and see if I can get that backpack off. Well, I was pushing the leg and I actually brought his leg off. So let's just, for now, let's just get it closed up. Let's you know, just take him out for now. 
I will mess with that later. <laughs> you can't even really see them in there. So it should close up tight like that, tight like that. And then this additional part is like uh, the, the vision, oops, it goes like this, I think. This is like his eyeball, you know, like his little, his little camera, which I believe that turns. Uh, and so this should just snap on. So there we go, it just had two little dots, basically, joints there. It's joined in the front. So a lot simpler than I thought. Push that down. Um, the Look at these little pistons here, the details on those pistons, it's fantastic looking. So that might be to represent this folding forward. None of the little pistons will ever really work. I mean, maybe they do on some of the other ones, but on this one it does not. I wonder what this is here. See, it just has so many little things. I don't even really know. The instruction manual doesn't show a lot, but you should be able to pull off all of the armor like this. Should be able to get it down to like a, uh, a, a, a inner frame, what they would call an inner frame. So a lot of people like to do that, just see it at its, at its kind of bare, uh, bare bones, which is uh, still bones, I should say, which is really, really cool. I like doing that too, because it shows you that they, they took the time that, to add. If you're a Gundam person, you know that you get an inner frame. You're like, oh, cool, inner frames. And nowadays, inner frames are pretty common. You get them in all sorts of model kits, just, you know, standard, you know, so, but, um, this is really cool that you can see, I'm trying to look through the camera while I do it, sorry about that, that you can see um, what it looks like with all the armor off, which is just really, really cool. It looks actually really cool even with the armor off. I'm betting that snaps comes right off. I don't want to do that necessarily and break it. But anyway, that gives you a good idea. This still folds forward. That folds up. These are like thrusters I discovered on my last one. They're like, you know, they help them, I guess, fly through the air or whatever. Um, it reminds me a lot of um, uh, Titanfall. There was a little medic pack. Usually the little medic pack goes behind the seat, I thought. There should be a little place here. Let's see if we can pop that open. Now I'm really curious. I don't want to break it. So that does that. Oh, you know what? I bet it goes right there. Let's take a little. Always have your nice, a good pair of tweezers, man. Never, never goes wrong. There you go. So it goes right behind the seat. Closes up like that. Closes, closes. Oops. Closes, closes. That goes back on there, and then you can outfit them with everything. But even just looking at the bare bones mech, it's a really, and that's. I think this even comes off as well. Um, this joint is really loose. I'm a little concerned about that. Whereas this one is not, it's not as loose, but that's not a big deal. Um, oh, and here next we wanna see if we can assemble these uh, giant guns. Let's see if I can put those on. So just, I just put one gun on because I wanted one hand as well. You just essentially snap it together and you replace the hand unit with the gun, one of the guns. Um, you can see that the legs, um, turning it out like that, they bend in and out like this, but I, I noticed this, is, I thought this was pretty cool, if not kind of uh, strange, but cool that it's not, you know, you know, glued in place or screwed in place. You can actually just pull that leg off. To me says that maybe you could, uh, I, I wonder if you could exchange parts with other uh, mechs in the line. That's something I'm not sure of. I don't think it's a modular toy line. Um, but look at the just to look at the details in the feet and how many little parts move and little gimmicks. I don't even have I haven't even sat on really figured out how everything moves. But you can see that what they're doing is they're building something that is really, really detailed and is very, you know, bot like and mech like and everything like that. Um, but they're doing it in a way that it's still a toy. You can still play with it. It's still pretty solid. It still looks really detailed. Um, but it just, it feels realistic. It feels like something that you could actually make um, where, you know, you can see the exposed inner frame where you would just slap pieces of armor on it. I've always enjoyed that kind of a thing, kind of a minimalist uh, approach. This stuff is just a bunch of gobbledygook. I mean, who knows what this stuff is supposed to be, but they just, you put, oh, what is it? Can you take that off? Ooh, I'm finding all sorts of cool stuff. Um, but you can just put whatever you know, but it looks like kind of scientific. This, I'm still not 100% sure what that's for. So I will have to uh, figure that out for sure. I'll have to figure out all these little parts. I'll mess with it. I'll look some other videos and whatever and see what Joy Toy recommends. The waist, again, is a little bit looser. You can see it's just one little ball joint, which I'm not real 
big on, um, but once you get it posed, it's definitely gonna hold that pose. Definitely stands up nice and solid. Um, it's gonna look fantastic on the shelf, just like that. Speaking of which, let's get it on the shelf and see what it looks like. All right, so there it is next to my other. So this, this is the collection of two so far. <laughs> As you can see, I'm doing my Hexagear next to that. I, I'm sure I'm, I've shown everybody. You can check out my uh, the rest of my videos and see my collection video. But this is where I'm starting my Joy Toy collection. I think I'm going to stick with 125 for now. Uh, if I ever try 118, because they are 20 or 30, 40 dollars more, I'll probably just stick with one. They're plenty big. They take up plenty of space on the site. I mean, on the site, on the on the on the shelf. This is my other one that I bought with that cool. You can see she's in there, and the cockpit's a little bit better. Um, so I'll have to just take these down and mess with them. And I'm really eager if you to see if you can pull off legs and swap parts out. I mean, you could put look at that big old gun. I could replace that gun with that kind of a Gatlin looking gun there. I'm not a big gun guy, but that definitely looks badass. Um, it looks really, really good on the shelf. And it looks like something that you might have painted or put together yourself and customized. And it's about the level of uh, of weathering that I like to see. I don't like to see rusty ones and stuff like that. So they do really, really good job. I got that one first, this one second, and I gotta be honest, this is definitely a ton better. I just think it just seemed a little bit more detailed. It wasn't, I think it was about the same price. So you just seem like you get a little bit more out of it. This is more like a sniper type one, I think. So maybe that's why it's a little thinner looking in camo and stuff, but what a fantastic line. Uh, Joy Toys, one 25th scale uh, Mecca. The action figures, the individual pilots and stuff, go for them. A lot of people like those. I'm not really big on those. I just like the mech. So for now, I'm gonna stick to collecting the 125s, see where I can get from there. But so far, so good. Looks badass. Have a good one, everybody. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.